Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. All right, Vikings Vent Line every Sunday right here on the Purple Daily YouTube channel and podcast feed. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button for daily Vikings entertainment. Of course, this is a show for any Vikings fan. If you'd like to be on the show, if you've had uh, thoughts on the upcoming season, if you had thoughts on the offseason, the draft, this is a safe space for you to vent about those things, good or bad. Uh, it's Vikings Vent Line. And if you'd like to be a part of a future episode, you can hit me up. It's VikingsVentLine at gmail.com. I'd like to talk to as many Vikings fans as I possibly can throughout the offseason. And, of course, during the regular season, um, Mackie, Judd, and myself like to welcome on as many fans as possible. Uh, stay tuned. We actually might be kind of changing up some of the format for next year, so stick around for news on that front. But regardless, the offseason edition lives on uh, even now. So if you'd like to be on a future episode, hit me up. It's vikingsventline at gmail.com. Of course, shout out to our friends at Quick Trip, who help power Purple Daily and Vikings Ventline. If you're in the Midwest or if you're everywhere you are around a quick trip, go stop in. Go start your day with the quality gas guarantee. Also some great options too, so go check out a quick trip. And this is Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. So hit the like button, subscribe button for Daily Vikings news and notes. All right, let's get our guys Eric and David in here. Uh, David, you've been on Write That Downs before. Have you been on, and you've been on Ventline before too, correct? Yeah, I was on one Ventline, I think, in, the 20, in Mike Zimmer's last year. It okay. was after the Panthers game when we barely won. I do, yeah, and well, uh, I think that was a Sam Darnold quarterback, right? Yeah, of Carolina yeah. at the time. That's right. Was I do he, remember. Did we that. go ninety-eight yards in one drive to like tie something the- like that. Mm-hmm. Yep, I think that's what happened. That's a good memory. I I kind of blocked out that memory, David, but now I'm now I'm remembering it. So yes, I think that is what yeah. took place. Maybe some ninety-eight drives now for the Vikings for with Sam Darnold. We'll we'll see if that can happen. Hopefully, more than Kirk ever did. No kidding. Uh, Eric, you're making your debut on Bentline. I know currently uh, you're across the border in enemy territory, but I'm guessing right. you grew up a Vikings fan. How long have you uh, have you been a Vikings fan? Uh, yeah, so my I mean, my parents always watched. I think as a young child, I was a casual fan. Um, I really didn't start getting into it until my first year of college. I started bartending and I got the Sunday morning shift at a bar that was never busy. Um <laughs> So, uh, you know, starting in 98, I started paying close attention to the Vikings, which was a great year to really start diving in. Awesome, man. Yeah, that's actually super funny. You got, a, got an easy shift to start to open up the bar, and you got football yeah. on. Not a yeah, bad thing. Yeah, it's funny, you know, for a bar and football in Minnesota, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I never made any money, but I got to watch all the games. Hey, that's a that's totally good gig if you can get it. I like it. Um, so let, let, let's start here, guys. Uh, David, I'll start with you, dude. Do you think the Vikings need – another addition do they have to make another addition here is their roster pretty set do you feel comfortable with it or is there something they can do with maybe some other limited cap space or a trade uh do you think they should make another addition to the roster here before training camp starts well that's a great question and uh yes there's absolutely some more additions that we need um as far as like wide receiver three goes because i know our one and two is already set with justin jefferson and jordan addison and we have TJ Hawkinson going to be out for a little bit. He's probably going to be put on the pup list. But um, So we're good at tight end, I think. But the main area that I think we need to address is D-line, defensive interior. We need somebody other than Harrison Phillips, who I love him. He's solid. We need more than that on the interior. Our edges are set, Van Ginkle, Gren- Grenard, um, Dallas Turner, that's going to be fine, but we just need somebody to stop the run. And hopefully Jaqueline and Roy wants to step up and do something. Uh, maybe that Levi Drake Rodriguez does something, but I'm not really expecting, expecting much from Texas A&M commerce. So, uh, but yeah, defensive interior absolutely need something. Yeah, that's uh, teams have been running up and down against the Vikings the last few years. I was talking to Judd about that on the Friday edition of Purple Daily, where for decades, basically, the Vikings just had a wall, um, whether that was the Williams wall, whether that was Linball Joseph. Uh, they've just always been able to patch and not let anyone run through them. 
the last three or four years, everyone's been able to basically run through them. And, and you take it for granted, right, after you had such a great thing for like 15 to 20 years. And then you just say, oh, just stop the run. They won't beat us by the run. Well, it controls the clock. It extends drives. It makes life hell. Keeps the defense tired. It's a thing you might forget about if you don't notice that it uh, hasn't been a big problem for you. So, yeah, I could see that. I could see them. And maybe Jaqueline Roy steps up, too. It was a draft pick. And maybe he has a, a, a big year at training camp. And maybe internally they have one right there, too. Uh, Eric, how about you, man? Do you, do you see the Vikings making another addition before training camp? Is there an area you'd like to see them improve at? What do you think? I don't see them making any significant additions. Um, I think one thing I'd be interested in seeing them doing is trying to get someone in that's somewhat developmental, maybe from the UFL, something like that, especially at cornerback or the wide receiver three. Um, I just don't see them, any move they would make this season, making enough of a splash to make a giant difference, but uh, maybe something they can use moving forward in that realm. Yeah, the, the UFL thing's interesting, man, because, I mean, there are some – decent players there. I'm not saying they're going to be pro bowlers or all pros by any means, but there's definitely guys that could fit on a 53 man roster. Um, and I think you bring up a good point that, yeah, the bulk of their moves are certainly done there. There, there isn't really like anyone out there. That's a difference maker at this point from a free agency standpoint. Um, and with them having probably limited draft capital in next year's draft class, I don't think they're going to be wanting to dip their toes, um, into the future pond to kind of help things out now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if they could find an internal option from the UFL or one of the UDFAs that David also mm -hmm. mentioned, like there could be some diamonds in the rough there. We saw that with Ivan Pace. You know, I know Adam Thielen's probably like the craziest example of that working out to the hundredth percentile. Uh, but there might be some guys here too that just surprise us, like a Joaquin Roy or like someone internally. So I would be pretty surprised if they were like made a trade in next year's from next year's draft class, to, like use a pick to get something, just because they have limited cap as it is. But there are some there are some holes there. There are some holes in the defensive line that David talked about. Having maybe a third depth option at, at wide receiver could be nice. Um, they clearly like Dalton Reisner to be you know their their swing guard and could be competitive there. Uh, so it'll be interesting. But I think to your guys both points, I think the roster is mostly set and internally maybe then uh, then who can surprise you. Uh, what what do you guys think the record's going to be next year? So David, they went seven and ten last year. It's a six and a half over and under for this year. Not a lot of people obviously believe in with the Vikings and Kirk leaving and some roster turnover and just uncertainty. I guess how many wins as of today do you think the Vikings can have by the end of the 2024 season? So I kind of have three answers for this. A okay. worst case scenario, realistic scenario, and best case scenario. So worst case scenario, Sam Darnold goes back to his Jets form and he just absolutely stinks it up, and we go five and eleven, uh, five and twelve. Okay, I think that's worst case scenario. Which okay. you think about it, we would get a pretty good draft pick, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't be mad at that. But anyway, so I think realistically we're going to go probably seven and ten or eight and nine. I think that's what we're probably going to be. And then best case scenario, Darnold lights it up, throws for 4,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, and he's just very solid. Brian Flores' defense gets it going again, and he's he has like a top 10 unit, and we go 11-6 and six and make mm -hmm. the playoffs. Man, that creates an interest. the best case scenario, that is, creates a very interesting like dilemma because I still think – J.J. McCarthy becomes like the successor at quarterback by 2025, but it puts you in not a pickle, but an interesting spot where like Sam Darnold balls out. But is it like a Case Keenum flash in the pan and you just let him walk away and you made the right decision? Or did Sam Darnold finally figure things out with like the best infrastructure he's ever had? So they'll lean, I think, at the end of the day, regardless of what happens, they'll lean on J.J. McCarthy being their, their next starting quarterback by 2025, if not sooner. Um, and maybe there is a path too, right, where they make the playoffs with Darnold starting and McCarthy taking over, and still, you know, maybe being a ten and seven, eleven and five, eleven and six type of team. But yeah, I think those three, like, I'd be pretty surprised, even with your worst case, like if they went worse than that. I think five wins would be, to your point, probably the worst case scenario, which still gets you a top, uh, top draft pick, at least close to it. They just cannot get blinded by Sam Darnold lighting it up because that is going to be the next case Keenum. If he does yeah. light it up, 
They just yeah. can't pay him Geno Smith money or anything like that. Just get JJ in there next year. I like it. Eric, how about you? Uh, how many wins do you think you, do you see for the Vikings this year? Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with David. I think it's probably somewhere in the 500 realm, you know, 7 and 10, something there. I think uh, even if Darnold does really bad, I mean, I think he still makes it to 3 and 5, 3 and 6 before they throw JJ in. And I think with this team, he could still push them to a 500 record beyond that. Yeah. So do you see, Eric, a situation where, or probably even is it likely that you'll see JJ McCarthy at some point in 2024? Do you think it's likely that? He'll make his debut this year at some point. I, 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 if I was a betting man, I'd say yes. I, I do not have faith that Darnold can turn it around at this point. Um, Mm -hmm. I think he's a 500 quarterback at best, and um, I think I know, especially the beginning part of the season, it's a much tougher schedule. Um, So yeah, I, I think so. I think at least, you know, three to four games we see JJ. Yeah. Yeah, that the trying to figure out what's the best spot to do it in. Cause to your point, real tough schedule to start. It's tough sled in the first six, seven games. And do you make a panic decision because you're obviously getting blown out in those games? How are you losing those games? Like, are they close and just you're you're right there? And and in classic Vikings fashion, they just have a meltdown of some sort. And it's not necessarily on the quarterback's fault that the why, the, why they lost the game. Um, I think in a perfect world, though. Darnold probably starts at least 10 games before they turn it over to J.J. McCarthy, if indeed McCarthy is ready at that point. I think I think we'll see him. I think we'll see McCarthy, that is, at some point uh, in 2024. I, I, I don't know if it's a whole year of Sam Darnold. And the only way that probably happens is at David's point. He just balls out and has the best year of his life. Um, David, which player do you think makes the biggest leap here? So w- w- which player, maybe you, I know you mentioned Jaquel and Roy. Is there another player that has maybe another even gear to get to? Which Vikings player do you think makes like the biggest leap and, and puts the biggest positivity to step forward uh, in, his, in his development in 2024? So I have two answers for this one, and I'll tell you who it should be and who it probably will be. Okay. It should be Ed Ingram. Ed Ingram ha- was – dog water his first year then second year he was kind of average to below average got better and if he continues that development he should be a very solid guard if he keeps getting better which that's who it should be and i think the player that it probably will be is uh, this might be kind of a boring answer because he was already good last year but ivan pace jr I think that he has all pro potential and what I saw from him last year, even in coverage, which coming out of the draft, I think he wasn't really seen as much of a coverage linebacker. He was more of like that pass rusher run stopping guy. But um, yeah, I think, I think he's going to elevate his game even more. And I'm very excited to see what he can do because he's really fun to watch. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was a UDFA that we even, you know, we talked about what UDFA this year maybe could be the guy that takes a step forward or kind of surprises. That was Ivan Pace last training camp. All of a sudden, this UDFA goes from a fringe roster dude to being a starter and a green dot guy. And now, to David's point, might be one of the best players in the Vikings defense next year, or at least one of the more important ones. Um, yeah, I think that's good. You know, Ed Ingram, was is the competition good for him having Dalton Reisner there? Probably. I, I think competition at those type of situations in guys' career, like Ingram's, to your point, where he's kind of at a crossroads of, are you going to be good? Is there another gear to you? Or is this, is this who you are? Which is probably at best an average guard. Um, I'm interested to see if Dalton Reisner pushes either one of those two dudes, also with Blake Randall um, having open competition. Which one of the two emerges of the three guys that are competing there? Uh, Eric, how about you? What do you got, David? No, I was just saying I really hope Ed Ingram can step up Yeah. because, like, I'm tired of these <laughs> dog water guards. We're um, always we're always talking about guards. Which which guards are going to cost us uh, cost us from being a legitimate team? Right? It's been like ten years of that suffering for through Drew Samia and <laughs> then Garrett Bradbury being just awful. Oh God! Yeah, dude, there's a lot. Uh, Eric, how about you, man? Is, is there a Vikings player that you want to see take the next step forward in 2024? I think what will happen is, although he's already really good, um, I think Jordan Addison will take a big step. Mm-hmm. I think uh, a full year with JJ um, pulling coverage away from him, 
uh, a full year of competent quarterbacking, not uh, Mullins and Dobbs. Um, I think he might be good enough, and I don't agree with this, that you'll start hearing people say maybe they should have dealt J.J. and gone after Neighbors or something like that mm-hmm. and rolled with Neighbors and Addison. Now, again, I think it'll be a result of some of the circumstances around him, but I, I do think he'll be significantly better than last year. You know, it's weird with Addison, like – it didn't fee- it, there were some big plays and big games there but like he had a 70 yard or 70 70 catches 900 yards 10 touchdowns last year and if you were to tell me going into last season hey he's going to have that stat line i've been like man that sounds like a pretty solid season and you would take it and run with it and it still felt like it was a quiet like 70 catches 900 yards 10 touchdown season for him probably because he was in the shadow of jj for some of that when jj was healthy but it just, it didn't feel, and I don't, I don't say it as a negative way, it just didn't feel like he had that type of year. And if that's like his floor to what you're saying, Eric, and there's even a bigger, bigger step here where it's a two-headed monster with Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison, I mean, like, look out. Um, you're talking about a high-flying offense there. So I think him taking even a next step forward, I mean, yeah, the the ceiling is completely um, a wide open for him to kind of crack and, and become maybe one of the better wide receiver duels in the entire in the entire NFL. David, just you got imagine, big, big just, things for Addison too? Yeah, like I was just going to say, like just imagine what his stat line would have been if Kirk was healthy the whole year. Yeah. Like I know we make fun of Kirk all the time, Good but point. like he's better than Mullins and Dobbs and Jaron Hall. I think we can all agree on that. But just imagine what it would have been like. He would have easily had probably 1,200 yards last year, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh before we wrap up here, guys, uh, David, any, any last takes, any last hot takes that are on your chest that you want to get off here? I know you've been on Write That Down before, too. you got some great predictions on the board. Uh, any last takes, any shout-outs you'd love to give here on Ventline? Well, my last take would probably be Kevin O'Connell. Please, please. I know he was just on the so- show, so if you're watching right now, <laughs> please keep Brian Flores as long as you can. Do not let that man leave the building. Lock him in a hotel room if you have to. <laughs> Please don't let him leave. But as far as shout outs go, I just want to shout out my mom. Uh, she's awesome. She put up with my Viking fandom for as long as I can remember. Ever since 2009, my first year watching and crying against the Saints. So, Shout out to all the moms. I love it, man. Uh, Eric, how about you, dude? Any, any last takes on your chest here on Vikings event line? Any shout outs you'd love to give? Fire away. I mean, I will say I am all in on McCarthy, and I, you know, a last take, I would say within the next three to four years, people are talking about us the same way they were talking about the Lions before last season. Yeah. Like, like having a legitimate shot. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, like, understanding the fact that the Lions were, like, a couple good plays away from going to a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. You know, for, for as much as they have been the doormat of the NFC North for a good chunk of my life, at least— they were a quarter and a half away of good football from being in the Super Bowl. The Detroit Lions, for God's yeah. sakes. And, and the Vikings obviously haven't been there since the 70s. And they've had really good offenses, the Vikings have. And the, here are the Lions. I think, I know it's frust- It's probably frustrating, like the emotional side of being a Vikings fan, to see that. But then it also, it's you can spin it, I think, in the other way of, if they can do it, if the damn Detroit Lions can do it, the Vikings will hopefully be on the doorstep of doing it too. So I try to take the half full there, half full approach great, there. Great. Uh, well, guys, great stuff here on Vikings Bent Line. Appreciate you making some time. Appreciate the, all the great takes. If anyone who is listening or watching wants to come on a future episode, hit me up. It's Vikings Bent Line at gmail.com. Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment, where we just want to see the Vikings become the Lions and then go to a Super Bowl. That's all. <laughs>